to you. I'm Nuri Mohammed. This evening we have the honor of talking with one of Belize's foremost senior statesmen, the Honorable Philip Stanley Wilberforce Golson. Mr. Golson, in visiting the Los Angeles area, offered us an opportunity to talk with him on an area of his life that we believe that very few in our viewing audience has perhaps seen or heard. Mr. Golson, whose political history in Belize goes back over 40 years, will cover with us tonight not only his political history, but he will also get into some aspects of his personal history. We welcome Mr. Golson. Thank you very much, Nuri. Tell us about the early stages of the Marcus Garvey movement, what you know about that period of time in Belize. As we know, the Marcus Garvey movement, the UNIA, was spreading all over the Caribbean and Central America. We know of the Black Cross nurses. Uh, we even know of uh, Mr. Antonio Sabaranes, who were also a part of it. Tell us what you know about that period when the Universal Negro Improvement Association started in Belize? I, I wasn't conscious, very much conscious of that movement. I suppose uh, part of the reason for this is that in those days, children um, w did not move very much around the city. Mm. At least I did not. I was born on the 25th of July, 1923. Uh, my father was Peter Edward Golson. He was a mercantile, mercantile clerk and later a lumber superintendent at John Harley's and Company Limited. My mother was Florence Bob. And um, I don't think they were married at the time when I was born, but later on, about 15 years later, they did get married. I was the second of what, seven children five boys and two girls. The, um, I can remember gradually coming into uh, consciousness about things around me. And as far as I can remember back, it's about, yeah, five, it must have been about five years old when I began to remember um, things. and maybe events around me. I went to St. Mary's School. It is the only school I went to in Belize, except for a short time after the 1931 hurricane, when I spent a few months in Mullins River. And I went to a school, I think it was a karate school, at um, Spanish Town. Other than that, all the schooling I ever got in Belize was at St. Mary's School. I, my, I went to school very near to where I lived. I, I grew up in Bride's Alley. And, and we emerged from Bride's Alley into Monius Alley and from that into what you call Angel Lane, near to Gabriel Lane and Hemiside Street. And so I didn't move around very much in the city. So I wasn't conscious uh, in those days very much of the the, the um, Marcus Garvey uh, movement. I think Marcus Garvey visited here, I think, in the 19, late 1920s. Mm -hmm. 
and um, but um, I was a bit older when it came to Tony, and so I, I remembered some things from there. The excitement, like the, the man Peke, who, was called, who carried a snake mm -hmm. into the police station. He was going in there to ask a question about somebody who was arrested, and he had this snake in his hands around his neck, and it was said that he couldn't ask anybody. There was nobody to ask questions to because the policeman who couldn't get through the door took to the window, <laughs> and things like that. Yeah. We we heard, um, but we could remember that it was a time of hardship. Mm -hmm. I think. All of us were hit by that. There were also men like uh, great orators who yes. used to speak out against hard times. Uh, like Lahudi, yes, Miguel Lahudi. Yes, and the Lion of Judah. Yes. Uh, um, Nihai. Nihai. Uh -huh. uh, do you recollect uh, some of the these times? Yes, I certainly um, remember these people and most of the time I would hear of what they were saying. Um, I didn't actually, I don't remember actually attending many of their meetings, but I knew that they were people who were exciting the, the community at the time. I, I can remember um, Nihai much later because he used to sell ice cream. Uh, this uh, was as a child, I was very much interested in ice cream, eating from ice cream cones. Mm -hmm. And I can remember he's going down with a, going around with a cart and a, and a mule and with a bell mm -hmm. and singing a song which had something about knee high in it. Mm -hmm. And of course what we were interested in mostly was the ice cream. <laughs> and so, um, but uh, we did have the impression, I did have the impression that these men were fighting for the improvement of poor people. And of course, my father took a great deal of interest in public affairs. Mm -hmm. And so I would hear him talking about these things and you know the, the um, advantage which the, the government would, would take of, um, was taking of these people. Do you remember a strong celebration of uh the 10th of September around that time? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, the 10th of September was something we always look forward to. We children look forward to. Centenary. Um, centenary. We would um, go with our, wear our straw hats, our little uh, white suits sometimes, a little uh, what is called sailor suits sometimes. Um, we would wear the rosette of our school, for instance. Uh, I think St. Mary's was purple and gold, yeah, a purple rosette with a gold button on it. <coughs> and to 19, until the September 1931, we went out as usual that morning to, with the intention of marching. We used to march in the town barracks, where after which we'd be handed a bag of cake and sweets and a bottle of lemonade. Um, usually Savannah's lemonade. And so we'd go happily home oh. after that. But then on that particular morning, it was raining heavily. And um, so they gave us our treat at the school and sent us home. By the time we got to Bright's Alley, where we, we lived, my brother and I, we found that tree, that a tree had fallen across the alleyway. So we had to climb over that tree to get home. And by the time we got home, the, um, the jealousy um, had begun to fall out a place. And um, shortly after, the house began to rock. Mm. The post began to come, out through, come up through the flooring as the wind increased. And then there was a spell when, of course, there was no wind a dead calm, and um, we didn't know anything about hurricanes in those days, so we didn't know that there was such a thing as the eye of the hurricane passing over. And um, 
eventually our house came to rest on a vat next door. And we stayed the whole, um, the whole hurricane in the house. Um, and afterwards, we went to um, a neighbor in what is today called Majestic Yard. But in those days, it was called Carrillo Yard. And we spent a few nights there and with friends, after which we went to Bolin Tripper and spent the rest of the time there the rest of the year there. So those are little incidents that I remember. That early period. Uh, we know that after 1931, that the even difficult, already difficult times became even more difficult. Oh, yes. Financially, the hardship for people. Yes. And the social protests of the common people, the working people, the ordinary Belizean man and woman started to increase. That's right. And that the British colonial um, government at that time started to become even more stringent in their trying to stop and control yes. this, uh, this protest on yes, the, the loan of the people. The, the, a million dollars was loaned to Belize by the British government for reconstruction. Um, so the, the, how the loan board was set up to make uh, loans for, um, for either repairing or rebuilding houses. And many people lost their houses because they couldn't meet, meet the mortgage payments as time went on. So the, the loan board was very unpopular. Um, it, it, as we know now from history that the British government exacted a heavy price for the, this loan, um, uh, some, what, some seven or eight years before, in 1923, uh, 1924, there was a constitution that was put out for public um, consideration. You know, Belize, since 1871, had, had, had ceased to have the, elec the election, the elective process. And that's when Belize went into Crown Colony rule. And there was all, all throughout all these years, there was this agitation for, um, for the return of the ballot box. And in 1923, they tried to bring in a constitution, but not for elections. It was still going to be, but it was going to be given to the official members. Um, but that constitution, the people was not that. So eventually, and the, the um, section of Delta, it was uh, class six. Uh, so the bill was eventually, they did eventually died a natural death. But after the 1931 hurricane, the British government insisted that in return for the loan of a million dollars, um, the governor should now be given reserve powers. So the, um, the constitution of Belize was amended to insert this reserve powers for the governor. How did people react to this? I, at that time, the people did not um, pay much attention to that because of the distress in which they were passing through, you know. Financial so, times were so, difficult. That's right. So people didn't have time to pay much attention to the politics. Of that's right. Some 2,500 people had died in the hurricane. Mm -hmm. um, there was all this wreck and havoc around. Um, this this, cons this um, amendment is considered was renewed in 1933. And it was to have great um, historical significance in the years that followed. Me. Um, as you know, the Elections were began to be restored in 1936, and gradually um, the franchise was increased. But in 1941, when the war was on and the British government needed the, the gold